everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be covering a quick start guide to creating surveys within Salesforce. So surveys are a great tool that you can use from your Salesforce org in order to get data based upon customer feedback, uh, maybe internal feedback that you want or just feedback in general. So let's go ahead and jump into enabling this first is the first thing that we have to do. So I'm going to set up and then we're gonna type in surveys. Go to survey settings and in surveys, we're gonna to toggle this on. All right, so now that that is toggled on, we can go ahead and go back to our front end of Salesforce. I'm gonna refresh this page since we did change some settings. So that way those can be reflected. And then up here in the three by three, we're gonna type in surveys. All right, then we're gonna go there. I'm gonna go click new. All right, now we're gonna name our survey. I'm just gonna call this a test survey. Um, we can create this as a template. So let's say we're creating a lot of different customer surveys that we're gonna be sending out. We could use this as a template, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna click continue. All right, so there's a bunch of different things that we can do within our surveys. A couple of the quick things I do want to mention is that we have two different tabs. We've got the pages, so the different pages of the survey. It's gonna be fairly similar to a screen flow if you have created those before where it takes you through a series of questions and then you may branch off based upon those. Um, but here we have pages and then we can also go to branding if we want to change some of the branding aspects. So a couple of things that I like to do is I'm not going to change the background image, but we can go ahead and do auto progress. So it will help us understand how far the person is within their survey or help them understand how far they are in the survey. If we wanted to change the image, we could upload a file here. Um, we could change the background color, add a logo, add the logo background color. And we can also change the different colors of the buttons just to be more on brand with our brand, I guess, to make it less like it is a Salesforce survey and more like it's a company A survey, or let's say you worked at Google, it was a Google survey, or let's say you worked at SolarWinds, it's more of like a SolarWinds survey. And the, just the different button options that we have. All right, let's go ahead and go to pages. So pages are going to be, I guess, the different questions. You can have more than one question on each page, but just the different pages help us to narrow down different aspects of a survey. So it might be better for user acceptance if you were to have one or two questions on a survey page, and then they were able to click through rather than to have like 10 questions on a single page, then they had to find like then finish the survey. Be sure to test this out with other people and talk to your users about what would be best. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a welcome message. I'm just gonna say welcome here. You may want to add a couple of pieces of description to this survey to say like you will be entered into a gift card or if that's something that you are offering with this survey. So now I'm gonna add a page. And there's a bunch of different things that we can do for questions. So I added a page. I am going to add a question here. And now we have a lot of different options. Let's kind of run through these. So first is going to be a date. That's pretty self-explanatory. I think let's say you're giving a feedback survey of interaction with the company or with maybe a doctor, like a doctor survey. You could say, what was the date of your last visit? Then a like or dislike you could give them an option of something that they like or dislike long text, so something that they can respond to and give a lot of feedback. Multiple selection, um, a net promoter score. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. So this one is going to be on a scale of less likely to most likely or extremely likely. So how likely are you to recommend our product? And then we can go ahead and have them go from a zero to a five. Now I'm gonna add another page and go back to the questions. We can do a pick list. We could do a ranking of a certain group of options. So maybe you're trying to figure out a label of a next product. You can have them rank the different names or possible names that you have. 
You've got a rating and a score, which is going to be different. You can do short text, a single selection, as well as a slider. So I'm gonna add in long text here. And then, so our previous page up here was talking about how likely are you to recommend our score? And I'm gonna say, what would you improve on the product? And this kind of leads us into our next thing that we are gonna do, which I'm gonna label this as improvements. Name that page improvements. And then go back to page one, and then I'll have this be the rating. Um, and the reason why I wanted to have the improvements is let's say that we wanted to, whenever someone ranked us as a five or below, we wanted to understand what improvements we could make. So only the people that are going to get five and below scores or give five and below scores are going to get the improvements question. So let's go ahead and do some branching logic here. We have page branching logic. So this helps us to understand where um, or create an automation where if it goes from here to go to this page. So we don't want it for every time for us to go down to improvements. We only want it for that specific logic. So we're gonna do this based upon conditions. So we're gonna go to page improvements when all conditions are met or any conditions are met are the two options. I'm gonna say all conditions are met. And then I'm gonna say response to question how likely are you to recommend our product? Again, we want the five or below, so less than or equal to, and let's go ahead and select five. We can create the rule or create a rule or add a condition. So that would be an and condition, or we could create another rule. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this logic. And it says our logic was saved. So once we have this survey go out, um, it should be able to make those pieces of logic happen. Again, be sure to test this out before you send this out to your group as a whole. Uh, maybe have another admin or a super user help you test this out in their spare time. Other things that we can do, we can add pages. We can move around pages if we want to. We can duplicate pages or copy them. I am going to delete those ones that we just created because we just want it to be this one question so far to make this video super simple. And finally, we are going to enter a thank you message. Just say thank you for participating in our survey. And then we can enter in any additional information. All right, so now I'm going to hit save here on our survey. A couple of things that I do want to mention before we go ahead and activate and we could send this off to whomever we are going to send this off to, but we will need to create a new version after it is activated to make any additional adjustments. So it is very similar to flow to where you'll need to make a new version. Um, I'm not sure how many versions you can create before you'll need to make a full on copy, but I would assume it would be similar to flows. Um, again, this is over here in the three by three or the three down, you can drop down create a new version, make a copy, and then default settings are going to be some of the email settings, the language settings, and yeah, I'm gonna click save, and then we can go ahead and activate this, and got it. We will need to deactivate it and then copy it just like a flow. All right, so then other things that we can do here is we can send off this survey, we can generate a link, or we can send it via email. So we could get this for inside of our company and then for outside of our company. Um, you will need to enable experiences for the outside of your company, but here would be the link. And then you can choose an auto expiry link and get QR codes and do some really awesome stuff there. And then finally, if you want to analyze your response, come over to this tab over here on the survey and then you will be able to see any responses that they have given. Um, I don't have any responses because I haven't sent this out to anyone, but that's how you do it. Um, again, this is just kind of a quick start how to get started with surveys within Salesforce. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Columbia. Check out the courses down below or on salesforceupscale.com. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.